Hey guys, it's Will Ripley here with Campfire Guitar Star. I wanted to create a video about traveling with a guitar, how to do it, how to get your guitar safely to wherever you're going, and some gear. We're going to talk about practice amps, some travel amps, travel cases, and also if you're traveling on a big old jet airliner, in the words of our man Steve Miller, uh, how to do it for free. Okay, so I've got a whole blog article on like the appropriate language that you want to use when you're showing up at an airline. Um, and uh, when you're checking in your bags and stuff like that, that's going to be in the description below. But, uh, but yeah, so let's get into it here. So I'm, I'm in here in San Diego and uh, I'm from Canada. So it's February here and it's cold for uh, Californians, but I tell you what, man, it's warm for us Canadians. So I'm really enjoying it. I was actually at the Stone Temple Pilots concert last night and having a great trip down here. And so I was coming down for two weeks. I was here for a, a conference to see some friends and, and to just get out of the Canada, uh, Canada cold into some California heat. And so I wanted to bring a guitar. Of course, if you're like me, you don't want to go anywhere without your guitar. Uh, but it is kind of a pain in the ass to travel with the guitar sometimes. Because yeah, firstly, it can cost extra money. Secondly, you run the risk of damaging it or getting it stolen, um, you know, so on and so forth. So with an electric guitar, what I did Firstly, is I've been thinking about playing electric a lot lately because it's what I primarily play in my band right now and, and I've been working on some licks and stuff that and I wanted to bring my electric instead of an acoustic. So it kind of complicates things a little bit because normally I just grab my acoustic and you don't need any amplification. But I've been thinking about this lately and just playing an electric guitar unplugged is fine, but just even having any kind of amplification is going to help. So I went out to Long and McQuaid. Uh, which is kind of like Canada's uh, Guitar Center, and I bought this Dan Electro Honeytone amp. It was literally $37 Canadian, which is about 30 bucks American, so not a very big investment. Just takes a 9-volt battery, just a couple of, uh, you know, you can get a clean sound and a dirty sound out of it. Um, nothing special about this at all, but uh, you can also clip it onto your guitar strap, this kind of thing, so you can walk around with it around the house or wherever you are. Um, and then it also, uh, you can plug it in via a uh, nine volt adapter. So you, uh, because yeah, I do find this thing burns up nine volt batteries in probably like five or six hours or something, you'll be uh, going through a nine volt. And, but, but otherwise, these things are actually pretty impressive. I'll just, I'll just uh, play a, just a couple of chords here. You know, nothing special about the tone on this thing. <laughs> So as you can tell, there's nothing too special about the tone on this thing, but what I really liked about this is firstly just the fact that you're amplified, okay, which will really, really help. Just having a little bit of amplification will help you just kind of hone into your guitar uh, details, you know, so you can zoom in and, and make sure you're playing notes clear and everything's sounding good. Um, and it also just makes just any kind of amplification just a little more fun when you're playing a, an electric guitar. So we were jamming with these. Uh, my buddy Eddie, if you caught him on the YouTube channel, we did this awesome uh, review on pickups. And so he actually had this, had this exact same amp and we were in a hotel room and he had his and I had mine and we're just jamming for like hours. So it was actually really, really cool to have, have this. And like I said, super, super cheap, not a big investment. Um, probably my favorite thing was the headphone jack. And so what you can do is just plug into here out of a headphone jack and then that way you're still amplified and you don't bother anybody in case you wouldn't need to be quiet. So let me know in the comments below if you use any kind of practice amp or any kind of cheap amp like that. Um, and let me know what you use. See, I, I was also looking at the IK um, iRig. So let me know if you have that. I mean, the reason I didn't go with that was just for distraction purposes. I don't want to have my phone where there's, you know, Instagram and text messages and phone calls coming in and I'm trying to practice guitar. I'm, I'm like, I was trying to separate those things a little bit, but let me know if I'm really missing out on something with the iRig because I, I did really look at that seriously. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below what you use and, and uh, any kind of uh, suggestions that you might have for people out there with the amplification side of it. So the other thing I wanted to go over today was a gig bag. So basically I kind of think of cases as three categories. You've got your, your kind of your slip covers, your gig bags, and your hard cases. So typically, and what I've been doing lately is, is not traveling with a hard case because the hard case implies the fact that the airline might send it on the conveyor belt. And I'll never, never forget when I was touring with Rev Theory, uh, we had some shows in Kansas City 
and I watched this this very guitar like head out on the conveyor belt. I was just like crossing my fingers that it was going to come back okay. And sure enough, it did. I was super lucky, but you know, not everybody is that lucky. So, um, an airline would never ever send an instrument in a gig bag on the conveyor belt of doom. All right. So, uh, so what I have here is a mono case. Now, I don't endorse these or anything like that. Um, in fact, I would I wouldn't actually recommend you you buy these brand new because they're so <laughs> kind of overpriced and expensive in my opinion. So I've got two mono bags that I found on uh, Kijiji and Craigslist uh, for, uh, for free, for cheaper than what you would pay in, in a store. So uh, anyway, so this, this brand is mono, but check out the brand uh, TLK, and I'll make sure to link those guys in the description below. I uh, met these guys at NAMM. I think they make a really good case, and it's way less expensive than mono. Um, anyways, I just happened to have mono cases because I found some, some inexpensive ones on Reverb.com and Kijiji and Craigslist and stuff. Um, so what's cool about these is that they're a gig bag kind of on steroids. They're just like a little more firm and solid. And, uh, and yeah, you know, comes with all the great things like the backpack strap and, uh, and the zipper pouch. I was able to fit all my cables, a pedal, and the amp inside of here. So this is kind of the padded gig bag version. So it's not quite a hard case. You can't expect this guitar to really be as good as a hard case, but it's way better than a slip cover and it's got some really good solid padding. So um, definitely I feel comfortable. If I have to gate check my guitar, I know it's not gonna get crushed or uh, you know anything bad happen to my guitars. But also it's small and slim enough that an airline would maybe allow you to bring it on the plane. All right, so that's what I had planned for you today. I wanted to go over the amp, bring an electric guitar on a plane safely. And again, I've got a whole blog post all written on the special language that you wanna use when you show up to an airline on how you can get your guitar uh, gate checked and not, if not on the plane with you for free, safely and all that good stuff. So um, like I said, I've traveled with guitars a ton and I've, uh, you know, I've seen everything from my guitar heading down the conveyor belt and crossing my fingers and hoping to God that it was gonna be okay, um, to gate checking and then also just to have my, uh, my guitar with me on the plane and just knowing that it's safe. Okay, so anyways, uh, check out that blog in the description below and also leave me a comment below let me know how you travel with the guitar, what kind of gear you use, um, whether you, uh, you know, travel with a hard case or, yeah, just let's get the conversation going. Let me know if there's anything I'm missing here. Otherwise, hopefully this was helpful for you. And definitely stay in touch over at CampfireGuitarStar.com if you have any kind of uh, guitar questions or if you want to learn blues or rock or acoustic. We've got courses and we teach one-on-one -on -one lessons and we've got a book that will ship right to your door. All that good stuff. And in the meantime, Keep on ripping it up. Talk to you soon.